Shalom, I'm Alex the Radical, and welcome to the aftermath of the Rubber Grip Tape Experience. I want to talk a little bit about some of the, some of the comments that some of you made, and want to share with you some insights that I've learned while making this video, so thank you for tuning in. So let's address Rubber Grip Tape as a whole. I think this is a really good innovation when it comes to grip tape. I think we all know as skateboarders that skateboarding is a pretty destructive activity, so if we can do anything to make our shoes last longer or our boards last longer, I think that's a really good way of helping the sport in general. Now, when it comes to the grip tape itself, a lot of people made a comment about sanding down the edges of the grip. I think that's a valid comment. However, I still think that it will start to peel from time to time. I want to show you one of my boards as an example. So, if you've seen some of my videos in the past, you'll know that I like to make really intricate designs. So when it came to using this board specifically, I definitely went all out. However, there is a lot of peeling. There aren't a lot of edges where I really sanded it down, but I do find for whatever reason, it still sticked and I was still able to skate with this board. But in the future, I'm definitely gonna consider sanding down the edge of the board when it comes to applying the grip tape. Now, someone made a great comment about using epoxy to actually keep the negative spaces from peeling, so I'm definitely going to consider that as an option. Um, this is definitely something that I like to do for my skateboards. In some of my other videos, I've talked about making grip tape designs. I think a lot of the time we're marketed to boards that basically have a graphic on the bottom, even though they always get scratched out anyway. So I think it's more personable when you actually make a design for yourself because it's something that you put your time and effort into and something that you're gonna see at the end of the day as opposed to this real graphic that got scratched out. So there's that. The second thing I wanted to address was this idea that uh, some made a comment about gimmicks and how like you can try all these gimmicks but you end up going back to a regular skateboard. I agree and I also disagree. I think it works in some situations and in others you can share some little bit of innovation. I think though this board is an example of an actual gimmick. So I found this board at a Valley Village for $13.49 <laughs> and there's a reason for that. I found out this company tried to make an aluminum skateboard to be a lot more durable for skateboarding, but clearly they didn't do a lot of testing in the market to see if this is actually gonna work. The specs of this board don't actually make sense when it comes to skateboarding. I think they had some really interesting ideas, like having this rubber bumper, but when it came to actual execution, they definitely were not uh, hitting the ball out of the park when it came to this. I mean, even look at the trucks. I started to ride these and the wheel actually cracked. So you know that they probably just made this really cheaply and thought, oh yeah, we're gonna make a bunch of money from this and completely fail. So there's that. I think this is an example of a gimmick is when someone's out there is like, hmm, I'm gonna make a lot of money from skateboarding. Let me try to make this. But they don't actually do any research to figure out what skateboarders actually need. I do think, however, this is an interesting innovation when it comes to skateboard technology. This rubber bumper is the idea that it's gonna present, probably prevent razor tail. And I haven't seen any other companies really innovate on this except for two. The first one is called Pro Tip Technology. They're actually from Sweden and they tried to make a, like a thermoplastic material that basically allows the tail to not wear out as quickly. But after doing some digging, I found that they actually just sold the rights to some company in Brazil. So now they really only manufacture in Brazil and I guess it's really popular there. But I think it's something that skateboarders actually need because think about it, a lot of times when we do hit the ground or just hit the edge of the board against like a wall or something, this is the one area we actually need to pop for a lot of our tricks. So they were onto something here, but maybe they were just way too ahead of the curve and didn't think about the fact that it needs to be flush with the rest of the wood, or in this case, aluminum. So there's that. The second company that I saw that's trying to innovate on this idea of having some sort of bumper is called Live Skateboards. They make a whole composite skateboard that has wood, carbon fiber, and some sort of poly, thermal plastic thing, but basically all along the edge of their board, they have this green uh, poly something plastic or whatever. And basically the idea is that it's supposed to be a lot more durable and give you a lot more pop over time. Um, but those boards cost like 200 bucks and I'm not trying to spend 200 bucks on a skateboard unless it actually lasts me that long, long period of time. But I think there are room in skateboarding for innovations such as Avenue Trucks. Now I talked a brief second about this in the video, but I wanted to kind of give you an overview of these trucks. I heard about these trucks 
you know, a couple years ago through YouTube and other people doing reviews, and I was really curious to see how they would skate. So I got myself a pair and was actually really surprised by the usability of this truck. However, it broke within like a year in a weird place too. It broke in this area, which doesn't make any sense to me. I haven't broken a truck like that before. I'm really disappointed, but when I tried to skate regular trucks, I found I couldn't. I had to skate like really like loose trucks and even then it's like the breaking period was so annoying so I ended up getting this pair as like my skate pair but I realized that this is a really unique truck that I think has its place in skateboarding but in two ways. I think it's really good as a cruising truck because the whole idea is that this base plate compresses on impact so that's really good for when you're jumping over big things or some sort of gap. But when it comes to technical street skating, I think these may not be for everybody. The one thing that I don't think these trucks will be good for is slappies. Once I've recently started to learn slappies, I realized very quickly that I'm gonna wear down my kingpin area very quickly. So if this truck company is going to innovate in the future and still be around, I would highly suggest for them to start making some sort of down low kingpin, kind of like Grind King or Crux or even silver trucks back in the day. And I think that would be a really good idea for them to innovate. The second thing I think this place that I think this truck has a place for in skateboarding is longboards. I've seen a version of this that comes as a longboard truck and I think that makes sense because this would really be good for going over cracks or certain bumps and give you more of a smooth ride. So I think that's where this particular truck company has a place in skateboarding when it comes to innovation itself. But again, it's not something that's for everybody. I wanted to try it for myself. And the best way I could really describe these trucks in a small review is that it's like skating loose trucks with control. The control being that you can really, uh, I guess like tighten the kingpin to the looseness that you want. And once it's loose, you don't have to adjust it ever again. But I think it varies from person to person. I've been skating these for about two years now and I really like it. But again, I think that for some people, they might not like how loose it actually is, but to each is their own. But it's great to see other companies out there actually innovating on skateboard products as a whole. And the third thing I wanted to talk about was the shoes. Someone made a comment about the shoes that I was wearing, so let's get into it real quick. So these are the shoes that I used for this review of the video. As you can see on this side, this is my normal kickflip flipping foot and as you can see there's not a lot of damage except for the frame and the stitching right here and some wear and tear in this area from pushing and other than that um, there's been no damage to the shoe so this grip tape definitely works but again it's not for everybody I gave this to a skater friend of mine and he said it threw off the skating for a month totally fair but I think everyone should just try it out just for themselves just to see if it's something that works for them but the reason I started skating in these shoes is because about five years ago, I basically discovered the whole barefoot minimalist shoe idea market or whatever. And basically that changed my whole perspective on footwear. So I found a couple of pairs of these over the years and it's been my go-to skate shoe right now because it has a nice wide toe box and it's pretty flat to the ground. It's pretty flexible. There's not a lot of breaking period. It just skates really well actually. But the reason I skate with this and not normal skate shoes is because most skate shoes unfortunately have a very narrow toe box and that's actually what causes bunions and foot problems as you get older. So when I discovered this whole idea, I realized, hmm, I think skateboarding needs a shoe like this. So I'm doing a little side project, I'm working on making my own prototype shoe, but that'll come out in the future. But this is definitely something we need in skateboarding. We're the one sport that uses our feet all the time and yet our shoes are not designed very well to respect our feet. And so this is an example of what could be done in the future. I did want to show you some bonus shoes. So I do a lot of thrifting and I find a lot of barefoot shoes from time to time and I can't believe I found these. So Adidas made a couple of barefoot shoes about 10 years ago and they made this. So as you can see here is that nice wide toe box. It's pretty level to the ground, pretty flexible. And they originally designed this for running. And I believe that this particular model, it's about four, or maybe five millimeters thick. It's thick enough that I can still feel the board under my feet, but not so thin that I feel everything if I jump, for example. Usually when I wear shoes, I wear footprint technology insoles because they're like literally the only shoe in the uh, insole on the market today that catches all the impact and is really good for your feet. So that's why I'm gonna be wearing the shoes. But I couldn't believe I found this because the crazy thing is that this is actually a size 11. I'm a size nine. I do not understand how this fits me. It makes 
literally no sense, but this is designed for a size 11, yet it fits me. So it's clear that people have Adidas and anybody who's in that design market understand how to design a shoe, but there's a disconnect between usability and the actual design of the product itself. But I think this is a really good way to show that skateboarding can have something with a wide toe box. Now, again, this isn't a skateboard shoe, but this is a shoe that could be used for skateboarding and I think is what skateboard shoes can evolve into into the future. So there's that. Then the second shoe I wanted to show you is this. This is the Lems Chukka shoe. I found this a while ago and I tried it on in person at a store in Toronto called the Cool East Market. And this specific size is a nine and a half and I actually got this for my birthday and I was really surprised. Oh my gosh. No freaking way! <laughs> This is something that I really wanted to skate. It has a nice wide toe box, it's pretty level to the ground, and it's pretty well made. Now, this shoe is definitely something that could be made by other brands out there, but it's not. But this is definitely an example of something that we could have in skateboarding today. It's just whether or not other brands are gonna catch on to it and get there. I'm basically on this future wave of barefoot shoes and having a wide toe box in general, so this is an example of something that we could have in the future. But I did want to show you that, just to show you visually, this is what our skateboard shoes could be looking like, but we got bands in other brands. But yeah, those are some of the insights I want to talk a little bit about when it comes to Grip Grip Tape and the video that I made. I'm working on some other videos as well. I had a pretty crazy summer. I actually broke my collarbone and I was off for two months. So I wanted to make a video talking about my rehab and recovery and my mindset when it comes back to engaging in skateboarding and how I'm going to skateboard. I recently turned 30 years old and I really have to think about how I'm going to skate and what I'm going to skate and what does skateboarding look like to me for me in the future. But that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I can't believe it did that all in one take. That was great. <laughs>